In a nutshell, decentralization as it pertains to blockchain technology and finance involves placing control in the hands of a distributed network of stakeholders rather than a centralized entity. To understand what decentralization means in a financial sense, you could simply replace it with the word sovereignty. The following two examples should make things easier to understand. Both involve Bitcoin, because even if there are centralization concerns surrounding, let's say, mining and huge Bitcoin holders, aka whales, Bitcoin arguably represents the closest thing to a decentralization case study out there. The two examples involve 1. Comparing Bitcoin to centralized payment solutions such as PayPal, with, as explained through another video, it being easy to come across centralized solutions that are faster, cheaper, and more user-friendly than Bitcoin. Yet they lack the essential sovereignty element, because it's easy, as well as common, for centralized financial service providers to close down accounts and otherwise disrupt access to your funds. This doesn't happen with Bitcoin because, being the decentralized solution that it is, nobody quote-unquote owns it. It doesn't exactly have a CEO, and generally speaking, there is no centralized point of control that can in any way deploy censorship. 2. Comparing Bitcoin to altcoins that claim to be decentralized, yet have various themes, for example, marketing themes. While there's nothing wrong with experimenting with respect to blockchain technology implementations, and while Bitcoin itself can still be considered an experiment, it doesn't make sense to call something that is centrally controlled decentralized. While exceptions definitely exist, the overwhelming majority of altcoins are anything but meaningfully decentralized. Of course, sovereignty is not just the gift that keeps on giving. It also involves a greater degree of personal responsibility, which comes from understanding that since there are no centralized points of control, there will be no hand-holding, support or complaints department, etc. Pros as well as cons, just like with everything else in life. For an ultra-detailed perspective on decentralization as well as Bitcoin, check out my book if you haven't already, The Reasonable Case for Bitcoin.